hello welcome back to weeks later I'm working on the Italux triple pack two two thousands and a and a, this 1200 uh, I've been effing with this thing off and on weeks can't get anything found out there is one of the ROM pins right above my crusty finger you might be able to see the discoloration anyway it's really jacked up. I pinned out everything and it was getting continuity, but something's weird and these ROMs are loose. Cut the ribs out. I'm gonna boop beep and add some solder and remove these sockets, put some SIL turn pins in. Also, the clock port pin, you can see that white thing? That's some kind of crust. I don't know what happened to that. I did the CCK, CCKB, something like that off of Alice, they're getting stuff, and I had this weird issue where I pull the ROMs out, I get a screen. Like, you know, something's on the screen. Like, some, the box is there, and there's some scrolling effect. Put the ROMs in, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, I get nothing. These are jacked up. I was thinking about removing the modulator, but right now we'll see. Uh, I did check the 1145 uh, CXA little Sony video encoder DAC thing in one of these two. Uh, they're fine. Checked all the timing fixes for the uh, budgie uh, doohickey thing and they're good. And I also checked U49 which is a 5 volt tri-state dude that sometimes breaks and you can just jump her a wire button. It's been a little while and I got the socket out and I found several goopy ones in there. And on the board, underneath the socket, now this is a 40 what? 2? 42 pin. Uh, yeah, a couple of these are really crusty in here, and it could be, I don't know. Sockets are in. Peel off this tape carefully. Yay. These are the ones that you gotta move the thing back one because there's an arrow there. When you got a 40 pin socket, 40 pin ROM, like these things that I don't even know if they work. Yeah. Did I write on here what was what? I don't know. We're going to use diagram anyway. Alright, so it's low high. So we're going to put high the correct way. VGA. Hit it. No diagram. Again, no nothing. So, as you can see, I have a something on the screen. But, check this out. So I'll turn the Amiga off and this will go away. Alright, okay. I'm going to pull these ROMs out. Just pull them out and watch. With no ROMs in the machine, look familiar? So I thought, you know what? Why don't I test ROMs that I know are good? Here's my Kickstart 314s. Let's see what happens here. ROM went on, I guess, high. And do I see something? I saw a blip. Nothing on the diagram because it's not hooked up. Let's get that out of there. I'm just gonna wait a second because now I don't see it. Okay, don't know what's going on. DF0 Terminator is in place, so if it was gonna do something, it would have done it. I'm gonna turn this off again, pull the DF0 Terminator out, grab what's this, grab a GoTech external GoTech. Entering power save mode. So nada. I don't know if these are low or high because they're always in the same state no matter what machine I put them on. These are the Amiga kit uh, replacement. Yeah, they do nothing. We can test kits in the drive if it was going to boot. But it's not going to do anything. So with that, we're back to square one. We got our new sockets in our 1200. My ROMs that I know work. I taking my time on these repairs because I've had so many I just got overwhelmed beyond belief so I'm at a level that I can cope with with working 12 hour days what do I see damn menu off of there 14 megahertz alright six pins up is seven one two three four five six seven megahertz 7 megahertz is only giving me 3.54 megahertz. 3. We're going to do for a low high test. Low. 
goes high. All right. CPU clock five. All right. All right. Fourteen megahertz flat. CPU is getting a clock. CPU is executing code. CPU is warm, not death. Alice warm. Or I'm sorry, yeah. Alice warm. Gale. Nothing. Lisa. God, we're gonna pin this thing out too. Let me check that. Alice, Gale, Budgie. Do all the panty ass tests. Eight. Yep. Row address select, column address select are selecting. That's on Budgie. Let me double check myself again. Where am I at? I hate these stupid things. Alright. 28.57 megahertz and good. So then we're going to go two pins down to a 14 megahertz clock. Two pins down should be 14 point. One eight, yeah, and and good. Let's auto it again so it's more centered. Yep, fourteen point one eight and steady. So we have clocks on the Alice, on the Lisa chip, on the Budgie, and on the CPU. We have clock, and it's like this Amiga wants to work, but it's not. So I'm gonna turn it off. I'm tangled up. One second. Uh, extract the ROM. Now previously I put uh, two new 42 pin SIL turn pin sockets in here. And uh, yeah, this is a brand new set of 3.1.4 ROMs that were kindly sent in from Mr. Jack. So Mr. Jack, thank you. Two hours later. Well, all right, maybe the 4,314 ROMs are missing something. Here's some ROMs, but I don't know what they're for. ROM 1, ROM 0. Nope. Oh, I got purple. I got purple. I have never had that. It could be the GBS freaking out is what it is. Off, on, All right, so we have signs of some kind of life. I'm trying to see what I have on this line. I'm getting data out of it. The Amiga 1200 has test points. They're located in the lower left. They're called TP1, TP2, TP3. So one is CPU clock. 14.29 megahertz. You can see it right here. Seven. There's our RAM. That's normal for RAM. That's column address select. Row address select. Memory is working. See the dips with the four squiggly cycles in between? That's working. Alright, that's a clock. 14.29. ASDS. So, AS. DS. I got all signals. Keyboard resets nine. Should be held what? High. It's fine. Low. High. Seven ROM enable. Low. ROM is held low. Double check the reset circuit. Reset and halt. Go low. Pulse high. And hold. Which is what it's supposed to be. CPU reset stuck low. Oh, guys, because it's something simple. It's something simple, but it's eluding this noggin because it's it's low on fluid. I said I was going to eat a little while ago. It's 503. The best way to do that is to do this and just step away for a minute. So it was at this moment that I went online and found a decent documentation of the reset circuit with chip locations and pins so I didn't have to root through all the schematics to find out what was causing the ROM enable to not engage the CPU which was the cause of why this machine was not booting. You'll see me tear through about three hours 
of diagnosis and testing to where I finally discover what the problem with this unit is. Something again so simple it eluded my noggin because it was low on fluid. What was it? Check this out. 22V10, 22V16. Holy crap, I'm tired. 22V16, 8B. 8B, 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 8B
It is secure. All right, put this chip in. New program chip. The correct way. In a socket. Hell yeah. Oh, you can put the sticker back on. It's no signal signal. It's this. All right, moment of truth. What do we get? Low, high. We have Gal code executing. Boom. Hell yeah. You son of a bitch. We had an empty Gal. I don't know how. We have a 3.0 Amiga 1200 again. Thank you, Lord, for that because I was losing my damn mind. Holy God. I checked everything under the sun. I think I've continuity checked that thing. That's why I don't have any hair, guys, because I do things 82 times. Well, you get one of those toupees. You can freak out one day when I look like John Bon Jovi, except fat and old and ugly. All right, so with the machine freaking working, we got to do the normal test that I always do. Bingo, chingo, she's a pal girl. How do we know? Because she holds her head high. All right, we're going to hook up the 3.5 millimeter to RCA. All four channels, op amp is great. 903, I like to talk to my friends in the UK, but they're asleep. Because it's like 2 a.m. and I forget. Just like you guys text me at 3 o'clock in the morning because you're up early. All right, memory's good. Uh, video, RGB, checkerboard, static, and alternating. I cannot really see on this monitor because it doesn't do it. CIA precision timers. All good. Wow. Pound numbers are 142. CIAs on NTSC are 159. Hmm. Cool. Port's not doing. What did that say? F823. Good. RTC no clock, of course. Serial parallel. Don't have a dongle. Don't care. What should look like an NTSC on a PAL machine? Crazy? Not too bad. No mega flops. 2.95 chip speed over A600. 14.9 Mega hertz memory two mega chip nothing else in there no boards because there's no boards in it bill and ted on the comment and we're good to go so just like that another amiga 1200 after a long road has been repaired and saved and hopefully can live on for its current owner or possibly its next anyway that's all i got for now thanks for sticking around for this long one for me short one for you i hope until next time Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something. Uh. What are you know from funny, you bastard?